It's time to get manly. This is my mustache already. <laughs> G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza. I'm Jazza and today we're going to be having a bit of fun with the male physique. The reason I wanted to do this today is that there really is something super epic and super cool about like just tanky, buff, crazy ass, badass dudes. They're fun to play in video games and watch in movies and cutscenes and they're fun to draw. And I think there's something really sort of primal and animalistic about people's fascination with characters like this. I mean, just take a look at the Hulk. There's not much to this dude other than the appeal of that weirdly like visceral intense crazy masculine cool thing but the reality is this isn't a normal look there aren't people in existence that actually look like this but it's a pretty common thing in comic books and cartoons because it's so cool and powerful looking and we're gonna today start off by looking at the changes in proportions and anatomy that you can use to caricaturize and over accentuate that masculinity and uh, the silhouette and form of the character or your people to achieve that look and then we're gonna reproduce these techniques applied to a couple of poses so you can sort of see also how different poses and changes changes in stature and posture can really over accentuate that beastie energy that we can apply to our illustrations. Before I jump into the nitty gritties, I do want to explain that this is not a tutorial on how to draw anatomy. Uh, I have loads of other videos on that and in particular if you're interested in diving into that I have an ebook called Draw with Jazza Easy Anatomy uh, but more than that I actually have a bundle where this character, this guy here, uh, is in a photo reference pack which I've bundled with the drawing ebook Easy Anatomy which is just called my anatomy bundle so feel free to go to jazzastudios.com and check that out the anatomy bundle has hundreds of different photos of male and female poses and proportions uh, different examples of anatomy in form and function and then the ebook itself goes into the actual parts of the anatomy how they're structured and put together so that you can learn how to draw the intricacies of human anatomy without being overwhelmed and confused by how intricate it can be Get. So first things first, I want to jump into talking about proportions. Reason being is when you draw big, tough, masculine, muscular guys, not everything should be grown in proportion to achieve that hyper-masculine look. And I want to talk about the hierarchy of what should be focused on and uh, sort of accentuated first. So I'm actually going to drag these guys over here and I'm going to draw a bit of a triangle. This is my upside down triangle and the purpose of this triangle is to illustrate the priorities of what should be accentuated first. The top group essentially what should be prioritized and over accentuated first are the chest and the shoulders. I think a lot of the time when people think of big muscly guys they think of like a the bicep really because of that flexing pose but in reality uh, even this shape this triangle shape here this is something that we refer to as the V taper which is sort of talking about the wider upper part of the body and a slimmer lower part of the body this is a very masculine shape and at the top of the male torso are the chest and the shoulders so these are the two things that we're going to be expanding first now this isn't a specific rule this is just my personal approach next I prioritize and emphasize the upper arms and legs then I'm also going to say neck and core I'll get to these in application in a moment and then last on my list of priorities are forearms lower legs then as we go down we have hands and then really at the bottom we have the head to be honest um, and everything is going to be expanding and growing but often the head stays the same size sometimes it'll be a little wider or more solid in its visual form but everything sort of in proportion being a bit bigger than the head and growing larger than the head sort of emphasizes that over exaggerated anatomical style so now I'm going to show two examples of these forms gradiating in growing in mass. So my first example is going to be using orange and I'm going to expand all of these in that order of priority starting off with the chest and shoulders. So we'll bring the chest out quite wide like this and we'll add some mass to the top and mostly the side of the shoulders. 
You'll notice I'm using pretty blocky construction lines. It really sort of helps me create a bit of a solid and tanky sort of aesthetic. Even just having drawn the shoulders and chest just like that sort of look like footballers shoulder pads, which if you see footballers running around the field, they almost look like comic book superheroes in how hyper masculine they look with those ridiculously big chest and shoulder pads. So next on our list are the upper arms and legs, these specifically being the bicep and tricep. So you'll notice I am making these bigger but uh, as far as in proportion to how the chest and uh, the shoulders have grown, it's not uh, that drastic a change. It is quite drastic still. In particular, in these quads, we get quite large here. And we also have the neck and core. And it might be confusing as to why these are prioritized with the, the biceps and the, the quads. The core is the center of the anatomical stability of the entire body and every physical activity, everything demanding uh, a huge amount of physical exertion requires a lot of stability and strength from the core. So really expanding the core, especially in the upper area here, uh, is going to help accentuate that masculinity. Now, there are also a couple of reasons why we make the neck a bit bigger uh, and not just bigger. I actually personally also bring the head and jaw down a bit so that there's a bit more of a hunch to help accentuate that. There are two reasons that I can think of. One is that the neck is directly connected to the back muscles, which is sort of like a mirror of the front, the chest, which as you know, have been grown quite a bit. So the neck is going to be grown as a result of, you know, those muscles being expanded and in demand. In particular, you have these connecting muscles between the shoulders and the neck itself, which are, like I said, sort of connected to and part of the, the muscle system of the back. The other reason is a purely sort of aesthetic reason, and that is that uh, having a thin or long or very sort of visible neck makes the character look a bit weaker. And by adding mass and thickness and even shortening the neck, it makes everything look much more rigid, solid and blocky uh, and in general, quite masculine and strong. And then we continue down our hierarchy. Of course, our forearms and lower legs are expanded, but as you can see in proportion, everything is still sort of leaning in the direction of that pyramid that I established. So let's call that our first level of expansion. And now I'm going to change my color to a, an intense red. And let's take this one step further. Starting off with the chest, this time it's so big that it's sort of coming out a bit. So I'm actually drawing the top end of the chest there so you can see it sort of popping forward, bringing out these shoulders. Now you'll notice that the expansion is all happening sort of in this direction rather than evenly sort of on both sides, if that makes sense. Reason of course being that there's only so much room to grow and uh, there's there's really nowhere in here that stuff is going to fit as everything expands. And also uh, the aesthetic is all, always complemented by everything being a lot wider than it is just in general thicker. That's why often you'll also see figures in really wide, uh, strong stances, arms usually further apart, feet and legs usually further apart. And I'm going to over accentuate this silhouette again by bringing the head down into a real hunch. By this point and in this really extreme version of what I'm talking about, the neck is almost as thick as the head and uh, these neck slash shoulder slash back muscles are just really huge and almost coming up to the level of the ear. Continuing our expansion here, following the same cycle with the legs. So that's like a rough example as to at least how I might go about expanding the geometry. Now, like I said, the tricky thing about this last one is, as you can see, it looks quite awkward and that's because we've got this sort of stiff pose. The reality is in drawing a character with this amount of mass, you would really start to stretch things out because there's no room to keep sort of everything in the middle there. So I'm actually gonna grab all this, I'm gonna rotate the arms like this, and I'm just doing it with the left side because you'll actually see the difference between them when I put them next to each other. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these two halves that are obviously asymmetrical and create two symmetrical duplicates of each. I'm gonna swap these over. This hasn't made much sense, but let me just clarify for you what I've done now. I've taken the character with the same proportion structure, the same level of growth in all the different areas, but you'll notice by simply changing his pose, by bringing the elbows out like this, by widening the stance of the legs, all of a sudden it looks much more natural. This looks weak and sort of stagnant and weird. Whereas in the context of having such a brutish looking, uh, very large and disproportioned character, this 
looks like it makes sense. It's wide, it's strong, and it's powerful. So I'm gonna get rid of my original badly posed character and I'm gonna bring back my other layers and uh, I'll get rid of my photo and just spread my references out here. And all of a sudden, this makes sense. Not only does it make sense, but you can see clearly how this prioritization of uh, what to expand first in conjunction with that expanding of the pose makes a really powerful figure. For an even more powerful context, I'll just bring up the size of my last example and I'll shrink the size of my first example. And with all these guys next to each other, you can see this very clear and quite effective uh, change of proportion to create that really powerful figure. So that's just how I would go about the expansion, the change in proportion, and a few little tips and tricks into the poses. Now we're gonna put this stuff into practice on two figures. The first we'll be using a figure in this pose, which again uh, comes from my photo reference pack. I've just sort of traced around that to bring it down to its basic construction lines. Uh, and I'll put him to the side there and I'm gonna recreate this character uh, using these proportion and anatomy changes and over accentuating those brutish features and uh, tweaks to the pose. And I'm also gonna do the same thing with a little bit more of a torso up pose like this, once again, uh, from my photo reference pack, just sort of traced, which is really helpful for me to find just a few examples that I can work with. And I'll move this again over here to the left. And now I'm gonna jump through these poses one by one, starting off with my full body pose. And I'm gonna apply everything I talked about before in practice and add features of the characters themselves. So hopefully uh, you'll see it all come together and it'll make a lot of sense and, and be a bit of fun for you to watch as well. I start off by roughly blocking out the same pose, but again, keeping that hierarchy of structure focused on the upper torso. You'll notice my lines and strokes tend to be quite blocky with sharper edges and really quite solid and uh, almost squarish features. This really helps create a very solid aesthetic and uh, adds to that feeling of stability, strength, and of course, masculinity. Quite often, hyper-muscular characters are quite coarse or rough around the edges as characters, so having a very rough external aesthetic really complements that. I further complement this by making my character here have a lot of rough around the edges features, such as lots of hair and veins, torn clothing, and so on and so forth. But all of this is added on to the foundation that I established, which was, again, based on those proportion changes that I initially uh, explored. Now moving on to the next character, again, the same hierarchy of structure with the upper chest and shoulders. This character barely has a neck. We almost go straight from head to back and uh, shoulders. I decided to turn him into a bit of a contemplative orc and you can see that the process is essentially the same, working from a simple foundation built from those shapes following that hierarchy and then slowly but surely adding the character details and strengthening the silhouette and uh, refining and defining pieces of the outfit, clothing and props throughout. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. This is the result of my run through converting those standard poses in pretty still masculine sort of figures into hyper-masculine, over-the-top, grunty, barbaric, visceral, punchy, jacked, hulking figures. Wow, that got too intense. <laughs> the cool thing is, this is just an example as to how to bring it to that uh, hyper-masculine sort of comic book uh, video game style, but you really can go beyond that and get things like the Hulk happening and brutish, monstrous creatures. Keeping in mind that hierarchy of proportion and uh, little features like the pose tweaks and uh, details like veins and uh, lines indicating the vascularity of the muscles. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Once again, if you enjoyed this and you want to dive into learning how to draw the human anatomy, male and female, and if you're interested in checking out some reference poses for the male and female body, I highly recommend checking out my anatomy bundle. Again, the link is on the screen and in the description. I put a lot of time and effort into producing them, did a photo shoot with the models and everything to make it as valuable to you as possible. So check that out if you get a chance and consider getting it if you're interested in supporting me and my work because anything purchased from the jazzestudios.com shop is a huge support to me, my family and my at home little studio video here. So thank you so much once again for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't to join the arty party and until next time, I'll see you later. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to my channel for new content every week. If you want to support my work and get some goodies for yourself, head over to my store for archives, ebooks, digital brushes, video courses and more. If you enjoyed this video, here's a link to another video you might like from this channel. 
And if you want even more, make sure to check out all my behind the scenes action on my vlog channel, Daily Jazza. That's it for now. Thanks for joining the arty party and until next time, I'll see you later.